why SOC? To realize a complex electronic system like iPhone, we need many, many hardware components. Components like processors, memories, interface IPs. If everything is going to be like chip, there could be different kinds of chips, small chips, then you don't have the option like system on a chip, then you try to put all the chips on a PCB, then it's going to be bulky. You might not be able to make something like a smartphone because it has to be highly portable. If the PCB is going to be bulky, then we might not be able to realize devices like smartphone. At the same time, this kind of complex PCB will consume so much power. So in this case, the smartphone is battery operated device. So if it is going to consume so much power, then we would end up charging the phone every one hour. It's going to be impossible. We prefer system on a chip to create highly portable devices that consume less power. So the big question is why chip design? VLSI is all about packing more and more transistors into smaller and smaller chips. You think of SOC. There will be different kinds of IPs, different kinds of subsystems. And each IP is complex. Each IP might demand millions of transistors. Then there will be multiple cores, multiple CPUs, multiple GPUs. In addition to that, there will be different kinds of application processors. Uh, there will be other IPs like interface IPs. There will be system controller. It's going to be so much complex. Obviously, this kind of complex system on chip might demand billions of transistors. That's where we, we make use of the technology called very large scale integration. So VLSA is all about packing more and more transistors into smaller and smaller chips. We want the chip to be smaller. And that's how we make highly portable devices that consume very less power. We have been discussing so much about iPhone. We call it as smartphone. Why we call it as smartphone? Because it does many things smartly. We can enjoy music. We can take photos. Of course, we can talk to people. Nobody buys iPhone to communicate with people because it has become a default functionality. But the big thing is whatever you do on your laptop, you would be able to do everything on your smartphone. You can even think of running simulation on your smartphone. So it does everything for you. That's why it's called as smartphone. How it does everything for you? There is a chip inside. It's called system on a chip. In case of iPhone 12, the chip is called A14. It has more than 11.8 billion transistors. This SOC has six CPU cores and four GPUs. It uses ARM CPU. It's of type RISC, Reduced Instruction Set Computer. And also this chip is based on the technology called fine nanometer and it's fabricated by TSMC. A TSMC means Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. Basically, Apple works with TSMC to fabricate its chips. All right. Now let's see how we design this kind of complex SOCs. If you consider any mobile SOC system on a chip, this is how it would look like. 
This kind of SOC will have different kinds of IPs, primarily two kinds. One is the processor IP. So we use different kinds of processors like CPUs, GPUs, DSPs, or different kinds of application processors, or video accelerators, there could be AI accelerators. So we put all these processors and accelerators together and build the engine. In addition to the processors, we also need interface IPs. So all the interface IPs will be placed at the boundary. These interface IPs collect the information from the external world and then it sends the information to the processor. And the processor is the one which is going to process the information based on the command received from the application. It initiates the operations. There could be some kind of data transformation. And then finally, it produces the results and it communicates the values back to the external world through interface IP. So at the core, there is an engine it's composed of various processors and it gets the information through interface IPs. It processes the information. It might do some kind of data transformation and then it will communicate the results back to the external world through interface IP. This is how fundamentally any SOC works. Now let's look at how we take care of power consumption. While designing the chip, what we do is we partition the chip into multiple voltage islands. So to partition the chip into multiple voltage islands, we classify the IPs into high performance IPs, medium performance IPs and low performance IPs. Depends on the functionality, depends on the complexity. Most of the processors could be high performance IPs and most of the interface IPs could be low performance IPs and there could be some medium performance IPs. So we define different voltage levels for different IPs. So we always reduce the voltage level based on the activity of any particular IP. So here we use VD1 for high performance IP and VD2 for medium performance and VD3 for low performance. Why we do this? If you consider the CMOS power equation, the power is directly proportional to the square of the voltage. So we always try to reduce the voltage level. You may always think that the entire chip would operate at a particular voltage. So if there is any chip, there will be VCC and there will be ground and then entire chip is going to operate at a particular voltage. Might not be the reality. In case of complex SOCs, we create multiple voltage islands. That's how we try to reduce the power consumption. So different IPs will operate at different voltage levels. In addition to creating power domains, what we do, we also use power management unit to control the entire chip. What it means is all the blocks will not be active all the times. Doesn't have to be. Depends on the application, we actually activate the block. So this power management unit controls the entire chip, which block should be active at what time. That's defined by this particular power management unit. That's something similar to how we play with laptops or PCs. If you consider laptops or PCs, there could be different modes like normal mode, hibernate mode, shutdown mode. We also try to do the same thing for the chip. That's how we try to reduce the power consumption.